Welcome to Homebuyer Workshop 106. This is Mortgage Mom Radio. I am Debbie Marcoux, and we are talking all about property taxes today. Property taxes are extremely important because it is part of the monthly payment that you will make. I do want to make sure that everybody understands that the majority of what I am going to show you and talk about today is based on Los Angeles County in California. Every single county, city, state, does property taxes just a little bit different. There are properties that have mellow roofs and additional assessments, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. I am going to have LA County Assessor Jeffrey Prang on the show, so don't go anywhere. You'll actually see the interview that we do, the live interview. Um, so please, I'm just going to get through some basic information very, very quickly. I know you can't see me, so just follow the PowerPoint, and then you'll actually get to see me and Assessor Prang talk about tax savings tips and all of the things that you need to know about your property taxes. But once again, please understand that I am basing this. The majority of the followers, listeners, and subscribers that we have are in Los Angeles County in California. Orange County, Riverside, San Bernardino, Ventura, San Diego, they are all very, very similar. The state of California is very similar. If you are in a state outside of California, I can absolutely help you with your property taxes as well. All you have to do is reach out to me text the word mom to 474747 with your questions or call me at 844-935-3634. That is what we do here at Mortgage Mom Radio. We are here for help, education, and advice, and we will help you with anything at all that you have a question about. So let's just go ahead and let's jump into the first PowerPoint, uh, the first slide, and let's get started. So how are property taxes calculated? Property taxes are based on the price of the home that you buy it for. That is where it starts. So if you buy the home for $600,000, as you'll see in my PowerPoint, in LA County, an average basic tax base is at one and a quarter percent of that sales price. So you can see that I'm showing you that that would be approximately $7,500 hundred dollars a year. If we divide that by 12, which is 12 equal monthly payments or part of your mortgage payment, your mortgage payment will be increased from just the principal and interest alone to by $625. That is going to be the base for LA County. Very, very standard LA County tax base is one and a quarter. Now you will get into properties that do have mellow roofs and additional special assessments. Well, what are those? Mellow roofs is an additional tax that is added to uh, newer developments, newer housing developments. It is to create roads, streets, parks, all of those things that go into creating new development. When a builder buys the land and creates they they make all of these subdivisions. They have the option to pay and buy out the Mellow Roos or pass that on to the new homeowner that is going to buy that home from them. The majority of builders will actually pass on that Mellow Roos. So if you are in a county of Riverside or San Bernardino where there is a lot of brand new development and new housing tracks, the majority I have found just about every single um, brand new development that I have called on within the last 12 months, they are all charging the Mellow Roos to the new homeowner. The builder is not taking care of that. So that could take your tax base of one and a quarter percent, which actually Riverside and San Bernardino is a little bit lower. I believe that they're right about 1.01 to 1.1 or, you know, uh, Orange County. You guys are typically at a tax base of about 1.1 or it's just under that. uh, I believe it's 1.09 or something like that. Um, But when you take Mello Roos and it gets added to that base that you're not going to find in an older home or a resell home, that number of one and a quarter could easily go up to 1.8%, 1.9%. I've seen areas in Turtle Ridge of, you know, right in Irvine that could be as high as 2.2 or 2.3. Very, very easily out in Riverside, San Bernardino, some of those brand new homes, we've seen 1.8, 1.9, 2%. So make sure that when you are out looking at homes, especially if you get excited about a brand new development, that you are asking your real estate agent, what are the property taxes for this property here? And again, if you guys have questions you want to know, there was a new housing development that you'd like to know what the taxes are, all you need to do is get in touch with me. You can call me, you can email me, and you can text me. So whatever is the easiest for you. But this is basically how they determine in the state of California what your property tax bill will be per month. Another thing to keep in mind in areas where they are doing a lot of... um, 
renovation and regeneration of an area somewhere uh, like Compton, for example, where we're starting to see property values increase and we've got a lot of uh, gentrification that is going on in those areas, you will see additional special assessments on top of the tax base. So again, it is very, very important that you're asking your real estate agent as you're looking at homes in areas that you like what the property taxes will be for that property. And again, if you don't know, it's very, very simple to just reach out to us. So you can email us, call us, or text us. Um, So let's go ahead and go on to the next one. So property taxes are typically included in your mortgage payment. Most of my clients are salaried hourly. Um, They're not commissioned. They're not self-employed. They're not bonused. And when they are, when you have a certain set dollar amount that you make every month and you can count on that income every single month, the last thing that you want is to have a large tax bill show up in your in your mailbox that you have to pay. Taxes are actually um, sent out twice a year. So for example, in that last slide, I showed you $7,500. Well, that would be $3,250 twice a year that you'd get that bill in that mailbox. Do you feel comfortable coming up with an additional $3,250 twice a year? Well, if that monthly payment that you're making for your mortgage is pretty much what you can afford and that's what you've budgeted for, it's probably going to be pretty difficult for you to come up with that $3,250. So most of our clients will impound or escrow those Those are two words that they will use. Um, They're property taxes. Now, if you don't want to include them, maybe you are bonus, maybe you are self-employed. If you have at least 10% down payment on a conventional loan, you can choose to pay those property taxes separately. They are not required to be in your actual mortgage payment. FHA and VA loans and most non-QM products like we've talked about in the past with bank statement programs, they will require no matter what, no matter how much down payment that you have, they will require that you actually have them included in the monthly mortgage payment. So keep that in mind. Property taxes are tax deductible up to $10,000 per year uh, with the new 2018 federal tax guidelines. So keep that in mind. Again, I showed you a $625,000 sales price in LA County, assuming it's a resale. There's no special assessments. There's no Melarus. And that was $7,500 for the year. So in that case, that $7,500 would be completely tax deductible. So now I'm going to actually take you guys to the interview that I did with Assessor Prang just a little bit earlier in the week so that he can talk to you all about tax exemptions, um, all of the savings that you can do, transferring your property taxes from your parents to uh, children or from grandparents to children. How can you save taxes in that direction? Uh, We're going to talk about ADUs, adding on, doing additions. How are your property taxes recalculated when you do those things? So um, if you guys have questions, please stick around. I want to make sure that we answer those questions for you. We will be, um, you know, you're more than welcome to reach out to me to get in touch with me. You guys can always, throughout this entire uh, program, text the word mom to 474747 and you can ask me those questions. I will get right back to you with those answers. You guys can always email me, very, very simple, debbie at mortgagemomradio.com or download my phone app so that you guys can play with all of the calculations calculators that I have there. Email me, call me, uh, watch additional videos right here through YouTube. Um, But we are going to go ahead and get this one started and then I'll be right back. Hi, I'm Debbie with Mortgage Mom Radio and I'm here with LA County Assessor Jeffrey Prang. Good morning, Jeffrey. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, you're welcome. So, um, so one of the things, actually, let's just actually get right to it. Sure. Um, I've been calling you the tax assessor, and That's right. you said I'm not the tax assessor, and I said fantastic. So, can you explain a little bit how that works? Sure. It's uh, it's people. I, I don't know where it comes from because there really is no such thing as a tax assessor. I've not been able to find a jurisdiction where they call them that in California. It's really the conflation of two different offices. Okay. The tax collector, that's who usually people are mad at, because that's the person who collects your taxes. <laughs> Correct. That's I, the one you're writing um, that check I, to. <laughs> you do not write your check to the assessor. I do not collect taxes. The assessor's job is, uh, is simple. We locate and assess the fair market value of all taxable property. Okay. But we don't do revenue. I don't collect taxes. We don't do our job with revenue in mind. We do our job with accuracy and fairness in mind. And so we assess all property in LA County. 
um, that's given to the tax collector who then generates the, uh, the, the tax, tax bill. bills as a result of it. There's actually five separate departments that have a piece of the uh, property tax system. Wow. Most people only know about mine. So, <clears throat> so you know, quickly, so if you buy a house uh -huh. or any property, okay. it gets recorded with the registrar recorder. They record the deed. They send us the deed. The deed is then uh, used like as a, as a work order. We go out and assess its value. It then goes to the auditor controller, which establishes your tax rates. Okay. It then goes to the tax collector, who collects the uh, collects the uh, the taxes. And then, if you don't like the value that we put on it, you can appeal that to the assessment appeals board. Okay. So okay. those are the five different departments. Um, I'm the only one which is elected. The rest are all, all appointed. So that may be one of the reasons why people gravitate naturally toward uh, toward my department. Got it. Okay. So um, actually, I just got a question um, last sure. week on my show, and uh, the question was from you know a listener, and they actually texted in and said, uh, "Are my property taxes reassessed when I refinance my home?" They are not. And that is how I answered the question, but I wanted to hear that directly from you. So there's a lot of confusion about your property and when it is reassessed. Mm -hmm. So. Um, when you purchase your property, we assess it at market value, and that becomes what we call your base year. And your property taxes are based on that base year for the life of the home, as long as you live there. Right. There is a small adjustment that is done annually, um, a cost of living adjustment, which is a maximum of 2%. Okay, and so, I was going to ask that question too because I know that somebody that bought a home uh, on the same block, right. same everything, right? Um, their property taxes would be lower if they had bought it in 1980 versus last that's, year, even though the value of the homes are the same. That's and correct. I know that we're limited in how much they can raise our property taxes per year. Uh, but I, right. I wanted to know what that was, and I'm happy that you so just the, explained it. So, probably that. the easiest way to think about it is that. I, I, I establish the assessed value, and the assessed value is based on your purchase price. The market value is totally different. Okay. So if you bought your home in 1980 for $50,000, but today it's worth a million, your assessed value is 50000 plus 2% over the years, um, or we call that a trended base year, mm -hmm. uh, and your market value is worth quite a bit quite a bit more right and so you could have a home that was purchased for 50,000 right next to one that's based that sold for a million and there'll be dr dramatically dramatically different property different. taxes. right right so and we try to explain that too because a lot of our clients think that they get into a 30-year fixed rate and their monthly payment will never change because that interest rate will never change and we try to explain to them that it is going to change because your property taxes will change annually the, the property taxes will will change no more than two percent um, so if, the more expensive the home that you uh, that you buy, obviously your that two percent makes will, a big difference. It's, it's a, yeah, it's a big it's a bigger percentage of the of the uh, of the payment. The uh, your your property assessment never changes except in very limited circumstances. The main reason your property taxes would be adjusted is if you do new construction. Okay. Now, new construction does not mean replacing a roof. You can replace your roof. You can remodel your kitchen. You can remodel your bathroom. Those do not get reassessed. The rule of thumb for reassessment is the addition of square footage. So if you had a porch that you enclose, we will now reassess the enclosure. And it gets a little tricky here as well. Or if you, if you convert your garage into living space or if you build a second floor, we will reassess the new construction, not the entire property, just that new construction. So you, if you bought your home in 1990, um, you'll have a base year. And then you do new construction. Let's say you add 400 square square feet. Mm -hmm. Correct. That 400 square feet will have a separate base year. So they're going to actually, mm -hmm. oh, and that's great because then you're not losing your original base, right. and then you're only adding to that new that's, that new amount, which is that, big. I mean, that's different than going out and buying a home that somebody's already done all of those things. They're going to sell you the home for much more money because it's already been completely redone, and now right. you've got mm -hmm. a base of that new brand new home value. Right. Right. One of the questions we're getting, I'm getting a lot of questions, uh, particularly in the real estate world, is about uh, alternative dwelling units, ADUs. Yes, yes. And, people, and he, Barry mentions those on the show almost every single week, and, so, and they're big. We People love them. So it's it's important, but from my office perspective, it's it's no it's not a big deal. We it is uh, we view that as new construction. Okay. It's no different for our office than if you're adding a pool or closing a porch. It's simply new construction, and we assess it based on its uh, its cost value, its um, 
obviously it would be more complicated uh, uh, piece of construction, but the methodology and how we do it is no different than we do normal new construction. Right, and I think that people have a misunderstanding of if they do a, an ADU or if mm -hmm. they did an uh, an addition, you know, right. put on a new bathroom, put on a larger, you know, family room, that they're going to get completely reassessed. Nope. So I think that that is absolutely fantastic that you can stay in your home right now, um, use maybe renovation financing to get your ADU put up, right. and not have to worry about being completely reassessed only on the new permitted. So when it comes pieces. to residential property, the way that we assess residential property is using what we call the market approach to uh, okay. valuation. So we look at similar homes that have sold recently, that have similar features, that are as close in prox approximation as possible. And then it will add or detract depending on what the uh, different features are. When we do new construction, we use a cost model. And we use standard construction cost manuals. It's not necessarily what you paid, because there's high quality, low quality. Right, right. We use a, 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 a regional standard, Marshall and Swift, to determine what it costs to build your addition. And so that becomes the basis for your um, assessment for that new construction. Okay, okay. No, I think that that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love that you you know touched on all of those pieces. Right. And I think that that's a big <clears throat> thing. Like I said, one of the listeners just last week asked that question. So I think that's great. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, uh, sure. because you uh, actually sent this over to me uh, last week, and it was all about how to prepare and you know file the Form 57, uh, 571L. And then it also, there was this big one that says $30 million dollars in tax savings unclaimed by LA County homeowners and you know this is this is big I mean this is so, big for future homeowners anybody thinking about buying a home and current homeowners I mean I know you're handling only LA County the the show itself goes out to Orange County Ventura right. County um, but you know I'm sure that it's these similar are, these, in those other counties yeah, as it are, is in LA this is statewide right. so um, let me tell you about the, first, the, the, the second one first, the homeowner's okay. exemption. Yes. So under California law, mm -hmm. anybody who owns a home, and if that home is your principal residence, you automatically are eligible to receive the homeowner's exemption. Okay. And the homeowner's exemption reduces your assessed value by $7,000, <clears> <throat> okay. which will save you about $70 a year on their property taxes. I know it's not a huge amount of money. No, but every, $70 <clears throat> it's, is $70. It's a night out at sushi. And it, it is. And it, uh, the form is very simple. Okay. You only have to apply once while you live at the property, and then you automatically get this applied get every, every year. And after, after 10 years, you know, it'll buy a new water heater. Yeah. But, but um, we estimate that about 30, 35% of all homeowners in L.A. County do not apply for the homeowner's exemption, primarily because they simply don't know that That they it can. exists, yeah. And... Um, and so uh, we also estimate that there's $30 million available to homeowners in LA County by simply applying for the homeowner's exemption. And you can apply in Orange County, Ventura County, every county has the homeowner's exemption and large numbers of people don't apply. So um, if you live in LA County, you can go to our website, which is assessor.lacounty.gov okay. and uh, type in your address yeah. and look for the uh, um, uh, under on your, on your property page, it'll say exemption, and next to it, it'll say HOX, homeowner's exemption. That means you have it. If it doesn't say HOX, you don't you have it, it, and you need to file it. Okay. All right. And now is and you this... Can you can download the application online. Ooh. Okay. Again, from our website, yeah. uh, assessor.lacounty.gov, on the left hand, lower left-hand side, there's a big button that says, lower my taxes. So, uh, no, that's perfect because I'm going to be mm -hmm. honest with you. People don't want to go somewhere. It's like walking into the Social Security yeah. office or why. Nobody wants to go anywhere. And if they can do it online, that's awesome. You can, um, well, un unfortunately, the law requires us to have a wet signature. So sure. you can fill out the application. But you can mail print it, it in, mail right? in. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I and mean, then, it's, it's just one less trip that somebody has to make. And then once you've submitted it, you're, you're good for the life of the home. Okay. Wow, I like that. Now, is that different than the 571 that you're talking about? So the about 571, here? Al, this is, now, a lot of people don't know this, but we assess not only real property, land and buildings, but we assess what's called business personal property. Okay. So in an office setting, your furniture, your computers, your machinery, all of that is assessed property tax, at the, at the same as it is for real property, at 1%. Okay. So um, if you're a small business and you have $5,000 of equipment or more, you have to pay property tax on it. But it's kind of complicated. Um, the forms are complicated. It's not my fault. I don't write the forms. The forms are, <laughs> are mandated by the State Board of Equalization. And um, 
a lot of small businesses in particular just don't get it. And they don't, they're not sure what to report, how to report it. So we are hosting throughout the county these free small business seminars to help you complete the, uh, the 571L, also known as the business property statement. Okay. And we're doing them all over the county. And uh, the flyer that you have lists where they're going to be uh, taking place. Perfect. And is this something that you guys have on your website as it's well? It's also on our website. Okay. And um, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to record one or two of them and then post those on the website yeah. so you can view it online as well. Yeah, that would be awesome because I think that there's probably a lot of people mm -hmm. that have a hard time getting somewhere right. to a workshop, you know, which is part of why we're doing this, right? Sure. You know, it's going to go on YouTube. Anybody can watch this at any point in time right. and you know you're not a homeowner today maybe you didn't think it was all that important all of a sudden you're a homeowner and now you're searching about property sure. taxes right um so no i think that that's fantastic I, I wasn't too sure i mean i saw 30 million dollars and i said we need to talk about this sure you know that that's a huge amount of money that's just being left on the table it is and uh, um it's important now because the new federal income tax rules has made uh, has, has made a lot of deductions uh, for homeownership um they're not as great as they they're were. Not as great as they used to be. <laughs> yeah. So this is one way to compensate for the loss of those deductions. And uh, while we're on that subject, I'm hoping maybe the uh, the legislature will consider increasing the homeowner's exemption to actually provide some some more substantive relief for those who have to pay more in California. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, that, and and that would be good. I mean, you think about you know how how long has the homeowner's exemption been around? Um, <clears throat> like if you had to take a guess, I mean, as long I as it's been Prop 13, okay. at least at least until 1978. Okay, and you know, has it always been that same seven thousand dollars? Unfortunately, yes. So, and so that's the whole thing, you know, property, you know, just like cost of living goes up, our property taxes are changing for cost of living. So if I were if I were designing it, and I don't get to be, to, I just enforce it. I don't make the laws. But if I were infor if I were making the law, I would increase it to deal with uh, modern home ownership needs, and I'd put an escalator clause into it that allow that to grow with inflation. Right. Uh, I think that's great. Now, that, that actually brings me to a question, because at the beginning of this, you had mentioned that mm -hmm. your your um, <clears throat> uh, your place, or I'm, I'm trying to remember how you said it exactly, but um, uh, your department, right. you know, you're the only one that there that is actually voted in. It's, you know, that's OK, so explain a little bit um, about that. You know, why are you when when people are going to actually um, vote for who they want their next assessor to be? Um, you know, why is your piece in this puzzle something that people are voting for? So the California Constitution requires that all counties, there's 58 counties in California, the Constitution requires that the assessor, the district attorney and the sheriff be elected. Okay. And that constitution goes back That's to the That's where I was going. I was missing sure. that elected official. I was trying to find so, the name. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know why they made the uh, assessor uh, elected, but lots of offices were elected back then. But here's why it is important to have an independent assessor. When I was uh, much younger, I worked for the assessors in the early 1990s. Um, and the, the, I was there the first time when the market crashed post Prop 13 and property values went down for the first time since Prop 13. Mm -hmm. And under the law, if your property value falls beneath what you paid for it, I have to lower your assessment to the lower of the, of the two, your base year as opposed to market value. Now in 1992, 1993, the Board of Supervisors did not manage their budget as well as they do today. Mm -hmm. And so they were looking at a huge decrease in their budget because of lost property tax revenues because of the decline in value in so much property. And had the assessor been appointed, they would have been able to put pressure on that appointed assessor to uh, to maybe not lower values to what they should have been. Mm -hmm. Because you're not, you know, th th that's a problem because <clears throat> property taxes are supposed to be fair based on the value. And if, um, and if they artificially charge you more mm -hmm. to protect their budget then you're being cheated right and um you know we're we're not about revenue we're about fairness and accuracy my job is to apply the right value where the revenue goes up or down so you're our neutral third party that's, that's taking care of us almost like an escrow company in your transaction when you're buying that, a home that's correct you yeah. need somebody who is not subject to the political pressure you're not collecting tax payments you have no revenue or gain in that and, See, that's why i'm yeah. not the tax collector because right. you don't want the guy who's in charge of establishing your fair value 
revenue, right? Also to be the one motivated by revenue. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't deal with revenue. Now let me ask you a question <clears throat> too, because that brings up a really good point. Um, you know, I remember in the uh, mid '90s, especially out here in Santa Clarita, mm -hmm. where where I'm located, we had our big Northridge earthquake. Right. A lot of property values dropped pretty significantly because of just really because of the quake. Sure. And um, we had a lot of clients who you know were very upside down in their homes, and they um, they did want to go and get their property taxes lowered. And I would typically just suggest you know take in get an appraisal bring the appraisal mm -hmm. into the you know the county and, and um, you know see what you can do to try to get those property taxes lowered now is that something that they needed to have done or is that something that should automatically happen so it's the answer is both okay so you're taught what well, internally we refer to that as a misfortune and calamity which may include a fire earthquake or a flood so if your property is damaged mm -hmm. in a natural disaster and it experiences ten thousand dollars or more of damage you qualify for a temporary reduction in your property taxes in your assessed value and we will do those um, we're now technologically advanced enough where we can do these things automatically we have programs to help us look at broad areas mm -hmm. and and make adjustments it's mass appraisal so it's not precise so you can also file a form called a misfortune calamity form okay and apply um, so is if you that, think the property's been damaged. Is that what you had here? Um, this was another one that you sent me that said tax relief for dis disaster victims. So, for example, we had the fires mm -hmm. um, uh, now near, all the near, near, near Malibu. Yeah. So we sent appraisers out there. We identified all the areas where properties could have been damaged, and we lowered the assessments. But a lot of people submitted individual applications so that we could look at their property individually just to make sure that it's, uh, that it's an accurate adjustment yeah, now what if there was though like let's say for example just real estate boom right that the market crashes property values aren't worth what they used to be you yeah. bought your home for five hundred thousand now all of a sudden it's worth three hundred thousand how does the homeowner can they take advantage of dropping the value at that point yes, as you can. well so that okay. we the in the same same uh, standards apply as it what did for natural disasters okay. um there was a constitutional amendment called proposition eight it's called decline in value so you can submit a application for a decline in value you can print it out online um, this, and you're basically saying my property is worth less now than what i paid for it but what happened in 2008 to 2010 when the market crashed mm -hmm. we proactively lowered the assessments on 550,000 properties in la county wow. and um today there's fewer than a hundred thousand that are still under that decline in value um level and most of those are in the adult valley right yeah but most of the, most of the county has recovered from but is the, it something recession. is it something that you, in the future and, and i'm, I'm just yes. looking towards the future it's something that you guys would do automatically or is it something that a homeowner needs to file those forms and we, get those in there and request if it? there was a broad impact uh, in the economy or a natural disaster we will do that automatically but you can always do it individually. You always have you have the right to apply, apply for a decline in value, for whatever reason. If uh, you think there's something going on in your neighborhood that's impacted your property values, you can submit that in the evidence and go before a hearing officer to uh, argue your case. Okay, and so and and those um, that's again with your office because you're the assessor. So once you assess the property, then you're giving that information then to the the tax collectors at house. So we. Um, yeah, you know, we adjust the uh, the value and give that to the tax collector to adjust their their bills. Okay. Um, if you still disagree, you can file an appeal. The assessment appeals board, which does not come under my office, that's my relationship to the appeals board, is like the district attorney's relationship to the superior court. So we will argue our values before before the appeals board if we disagree with the taxpayer okay but uh if the appeals board agrees with you they'll lower your assessment very nice very good so um when is the next election oh when are I, I when, was, when do was, you go through that i again? was i was just reelected in uh, november this last year okay. so mercifully i got a few more years to uh, to focus on uh, getting the, the work the, the work of the uh, of the office done okay all right and but, um and how often are you reelected? is it for every four years every four okay so it's the same as it, as most offices yeah, yeah. Okay. most offices are four years okay all right um you know I, this has just been such valuable information i really feel so, you know I, can i mention two yes, things please, two things that are important please uh, keep going two things for your, your homeowners one yeah. is um so if you uh own your property and you want to give it to your children you can give your property to your children with your low tax base you can pass along your tax base to your kids 
it's, uh, it's called Proposition 58. <clears throat> you are required to fill out an application and submit this to us. Where it really goes wrong with a lot of people is that sometimes somebody will, uh, a parent will die, um, and the children or the, the heirs will not notify us of the death of the property owner. And if you are inheriting your parents' property and you would anticipate getting that low property tax value and you fail to notify us that there has been a death, it will It will mess reassess, things up. right. It will reassess. We can sometimes fix it prospectively, but it's a bit of a mess. So, yeah, it's hard. I mean, what, once it's already gone one direction, it's hard to go back the other so, direction. So one is, in order to take advantage of any tax savings program, it requires an application. It is not automatic. You have to tell us. Secondly, as part of your estate planning, make certain that filing the the, the, the death notification with the assessor's office uh, is one of the, uh, the the checklist items. Okay. No, and, and I, I actually really like that. Um, I, I have a lot of people that get kind of confused with uh, passing the property taxes to um, family, you know, right. and, um, you, you know, so I believe that grandparents can also give so, the taxes right to their grandchildren that's correct okay. grandparents can give it to their grandchildren as long as the child is deceased okay um, but you, they, if they're if so okay so the grandparents can only do it if they're like for example if if I was passed away my mother could do it for my children that's 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 correct okay but it can't be even if if mother's alive then it can't go from grandparents to children that's correct okay um, and you absolutely cannot do it through brothers and sisters I mean it literally no. is for a it's parent parent down. or grandparent um, and you have to also be careful because if you leave your property to multiple children, um, that could be a, a problem as well. Because uh, here, here was an example, somebody gave their property to two kids and then one of the kids bought out the other one and then they got reassessed and said, hey, this came from my parents. But uh, but it really didn't. It came from your, you, you changed ownership with right, your Right, from your, your brother your to your brother. Sibling. Right, right. Gotcha. But a parent can actually, if they owned four or five different properties, I think I'd asked you this last time you were on the show, if they own four or five different properties, they have four or five different children, they could actually leave one property per child, correct? Yes. Yes. The, um, <clears throat> the uh, other thing that uh, you can do with uh, your low, if you have a low base year, is you can move. If you're a senior citizen, you can move someplace else in the county and take your 1990 base year with you so your taxes will remain low as long as the home is of equal or lesser value right so and, uh, right so if you're selling a home that you for 500,000 you need to buy another home you can't go buy a million dollar home that's correct you've got to buy something 500 or below um, and I do believe that there are other counties that do work with us right so that? yeah S San Bernardino uh, 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 Ventura County I think there's 16 of the 58 counties that participated this so you uh, you can move to other counties and take your base year with you. Yeah, that's nice, especially for people. You know, there's a lot of uh, people that do go to Palm <coughs> Springs or, you know, that that's where they're going for right. retirement and they can actually bring those taxes with them. So here's a um, another thing that gets people in trouble now and again, and that is building records. So somebody buys a, uh, a uh, two-bedroom home, a large, spacious, open floor plan, two-bedroom home, but our county, our records say that it's, uh, the city records say that it's uh, a four-bedroom home. With small bedrooms and they want to know what's right the assessor's record says one thing mm -hmm. and the city records say something else <clears throat> well the assessor's records reflect what is actually there we do not opine on whether or not it's legal or not so if you have a city city record that says it's four bedrooms and our records say it's two bedrooms that tells me somebody did illegal construction without a permit. So how do you guys know though? I mean, you know, for example, if I was to take, I have a four bedroom house and let's say I opened up a wall and I made, you know, two of the bedrooms, one big bedroom, right? How do you guys know that I'm now a three bedroom, two bedroom? It, it could be that uh, maybe you did other new construction and we saw that and made a correction. It could be that your neighbor turned you in and told us about it because we're so not, you can't ever be too careful. So we're, we're, <laughs> we're not a, we're not an enforcement agency. Right, right. If they say that hey, I think this property is inaccurately reflected on your records, we will correct it to accurately reflect what's there. But if you have an illegal garage conversion. You know, we will assess that as improved space, but if the city finds out that you did that and you right, never permit, yet. they'll make you tear it out. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> along with a lot of fines and penalties. So, um, <laughs> so city records 
are the authoritative records. Ours are just indicators, but you shouldn't rely on those legally. Okay. All right. No, I, I like all of that. I, I mm -hmm. actually did have one more question for sure. you as you were saying that, and um, now I've just <clears throat> totally lost it, so I'm sure that it'll come back, and we'll stop filming, and then I'll ask you the question. Oh. But, um, you know, there, there's there's so much that go comes down to property taxes and, you know, um, so one of the great things that you know, I encourage everybody, again, to go to our website, which is assessor.lacounty.gov, type in your address, see all the information that's about available about your property. Um, maybe you'll see that there's a, a, an error that you want to bring to our attention. It gives the assessment history. Uh, your tax information is, is available there. Pictures and maps, everything you want to know about that piece of property that's publicly available is there on our website. And we've uh, tried to make it... Uh, uh, the website is usable as possible so that we can help you with it be saving money on your property taxes or just learning on what's going on in your neighborhood. Yeah, no, I think that that's great. And, and you know, again, anybody that is a few, going to be a homeowner, a future homeowner, or anybody that is a homeowner today, it is so important for them to understand yeah. what is going into their property mm -hmm. tax bill. A lot of times they get the tax bill in the mail. They don't even know how to read it. They don't understand right. what is there. Um, they don't understand the assessment. Like I said, they have 30-year fixed mortgages. They don't think that their payments are going to change. So there's so much that they could actually learn from yeah. your website, you know, just being homeowners. And I do remember what the question was that I was going to ask you. So um, when somebody actually gets uh, a permit, they want to do the expansion on a home. Yes. And they're going to go from a three bedroom to a four bedroom, add a bathroom, expand the kitchen, they're going to do a new dining room. Um, you know, we have found a lot of times what I've seen is that people have done them legally, they've gotten the permits, they've done right. all of the work legally. But when I pull it on title, somebody goes to sell the home, now they're going to turn around and sell the home. Mm -hmm. And we pull the preliminary title report, and we're looking, you know, at the records, the records are actually not updated so whose job is it actually once that construction is done and you got the permits to do it um, how you know whose job is it to make sure that those records are getting updated? so when there when permits are pulled and there are changes we get copies of all those and then we will adjust our records to reflect what those changes are if there's a um, inconsistency it, depends on when you're looking at it. I guess it could be just a lag time in processing. It could be an error. But, uh, mm -hmm. but and, and I run up, I, we actually run a, a, up against that quite often. Um, for example, I have a loan right now that it's a client that's doing a refinance and he actually added on a, a a bedroom and a bathroom and he expanded his master bedroom so his square footage what you see when I pull title is showing <clears throat> totally different than what he's telling me that it is and I right. and I even asked him, I said did you get permitted did you do you know the construction the right way because I'm trying to gauge you know do we have enough equity there to do the sure. refinance and I'm trying to figure out what his home is worth and you know obviously I'm pulling just quick information and I'm seeing three bedroom two bath and he's telling me he's four bedrooms three bath and you know so right. I'm just wondering <clears throat> if, if there is a home that's in that situation what is the best what is the best step forward for them to make sure the best, that the records get updated the best correctly? way is to contact our office okay and bring that to our attention we are going to, we're, we're investing a lot of money right now in our technology and you um, very shortly within the next year you'll be able to go on to your own property if you see there's an error you'll be able to send in a correction to us right there on uh, online oh, but nice. right now um, you can contact our office and we will um, uh, again, through our website at assessor.lacounty.gov and uh, uh, contact us to let us know that there's a correction that needs to be addressed on your property records and we'll fix it. Okay, awesome. So, but I guess last question is, when they get that uh, permit and they do that work and everything yes. gets signed off, uh, they're obviously going through, you know, the, the county or the city to get the permits depending right. on where the home is located. Um, is it their job, the county city, to then be sending that to you as the assessor? So it could yes. there be, is that where that lag time is coming from? Yes. Or is that where maybe it's not always <laughs> Full proof that you're not getting that reliable information. So we typically get the information reliably, maybe not as fast as the work is being done. But cities are required by law to provide the assessor with copies of all new building and construction permits. We then analyze them to determine whether that construction is a reassessable event, and then if it is, then we process it and update our records. Okay. And it could be could it be something that maybe the homeowners are doing? So they're pulling the permits to do the work. Maybe they're not calling to have someone out come out and finalize, do a final inspection on the work or could it, it be something in that regard? It could be. It could be that they uh, uh, 
made changes after the inspection. Um, there's a number of reasons why that could have, have occurred. Maybe okay. they made additional changes after the construction was complete because they want in the, the right, were, uh, right. that were off the permit. But, yeah, uh, and, and, it, and it's kind of, it, you know, it's it's that twofold, right? I mean, a lot of them are thinking, well, you know, it only says I'm a three-bedroom, two-bathroom with 1,200 square yeah. feet, <clears> so <throat> my property taxes is better. But they don't realize that when they go to sell that home that they need to have the accurate records on title, sure. you know, so that they're getting the value for the home and, you know, right. All of those exactly. things so it, it is kind of a twofold and it's definitely better to have everything right up on board legal done the yep. right way um, are there any penalties that somebody would see if they had done the work they had improved it they had added on and then they weren't actually paying taxes because the assessment wasn't done correctly they um, probably could well they could be penalized for doing work that was not permitted by the by this by, by the by the city mm -hmm. um, but uh, typically we're not uh, going back to you're not going backwards in the records. Right. Okay. All right. But but the one thing is if you uh, – one thing that does confuse people, if you, if you make improvements to your property without a permit and we know about it, you'll be assessed and you'll pay tax pay taxes on it. But the fact that you pay taxes on it doesn't make it legal. Right. And you don't get that money back if you uh, if the city comes in and says – Right. Right. So, you, so, you, so you're making payments on the improvement, on, on the improvement and then the city could come in and say, now you need to take all this down. That's right. Right. Yeah, wow. And then we'll make an adjustment. We will adjust it as now – from improved to unimproved space, and your assessment will be changed, but you're uh, you're out of luck on the yeah. taxes that you paid. Wow, uh, Jeffrey, you have been so amazing. Thank you so much. My I mean, pleasure. this is really just such valuable information for homeowners and you know, especially future home buyers. Um, you know, I just think that this is some great stuff. I love that you've told everybody to go to the website numerous times. Tell them again. Um, Assessor.lacounty.gov. And sign up for our newsletter. We'll send you some useful information about what it, uh, what's important for people who own property. Yeah. No, I think that's great. And then is there um, I, the workshops? If you guys are business owners, make sure you guys sign up for those. Um, I didn't know that this is something new that you're just telling me. So, you know, some I, I may actually sign been, up. <laughs> I would love to see you guys get it online. We've been doing this for, for, for a long time, but we're working much harder to promote it so people can take advantage of it. Yeah, absolutely. And then, hey, you know what? If you haven't filed your homeowner's exemption, do that. Why not save that $7,000? a year. So um, thank you again. You've been wonderful. Great. Thank you so much. You're great, welcome. Great to be here. Okay, so that was absolutely wonderful with uh, LA County Assessor Jeffrey Prang. Uh, he is actually not here with us in the studio right now. That was uh, recorded uh, last week, actually, when I was absolutely dying and sick. So I apologize for the way that I sounded very nasally. Um, but I do want you guys all to know that any questions that you have, you guys can keep asking those questions. Download my phone app, run monthly payments, ask me questions, go to my Facebook page, um, do anything that we can, you know, we're here to help you in any way that we possibly can. So text the word mom to 474747. If you have any questions whatsoever, we are here to help um, in any way possible. How do you guys contact us? Okay, well, pretty simple. Go to mortgagemomradio.com. Um, of course, you guys have the phone app that I just showed to you. We are Mortgage Mom Radio everywhere. We are Mortgage Mom Radio on Facebook, Mortgage Mom Radio on Yelp. Um, we are Mortgage Mom Radio on Instagram. We're Mortgage Mom Radio on Twitter. So anywhere that you want to find us, whatever um, you know, social media that you like, like to use whatever program or app that you like to use, you guys will find us everywhere but Snapchat. Um, but uh, give us a call. It's 844-935-3634. And we are here to help in any way that we can. The very last screen here is just all of our disclosures to make sure that we are covered um, you know, by our licensing and everything else. But again, I hope that you guys um, enjoyed this uh, premiere. I hope that you enjoyed the video. And please, please get those taxes, uh, those tax questions to us. We would absolutely love to help. Thank you so much and you guys have a wonderful day.